Hello and welcome back to this course on aromaticity. Today we are going to see about the homoaromaticity that exists in molecule. So this module will cover all the aspects of homoaromaticity and before going into the homoaromaticity I would like to give you an insight about Mobius aromatic molecules. Aromaticity which is most commonly defines molecule to be planar and have a complete delocalized system of 4n plus 2 pi electrons. Now this complete cyclic delocalization of pi electrons leads to an extra thermodynamic stability to the molecules and it also explains many of the spectroscopic, magnetic and chemical properties associated with aromatic compounds. Aromaticity gives a new dimension to the molecule especially to its magnetic property, spectroscopic property and chemical property when compared to the localized resonance form that is simple alkenes. Aromaticity also accounts for the reactivity of compounds where the aromatic compounds differ significantly from that of alkenes. Several molecules display aromatic character but they do not strictly follow the definition mentioned above that is the 4n plus 2 pi electron or Huckel's rule thus leading to extensions to the definition of aromaticity and one such example is Mobius aromatics which has 4n pi electrons yet they exhibit aromatic character. So today we are going to see what is this Mobius aromatics and how this Mobius aromatics is differ is different from Huckel aromatic system. I am taking up the reference of Wikipedia where I understand that Mobius aromaticity is a special type of aromaticity that exists in a number of organic molecules. Okay, And when you compare the arrangement of orbitals in the case of Huckel system you can see the orbitals are arranged in a planar form okay whereas uh, and also these compounds have a common monocyclic array of molecular orbitals in which there is an odd number of out of phase overlaps the opposite pattern compared to that of aromatic character to Huckel system. So what is the basic difference between a Huckel concept of molecular orbital and Mobius concept of molecular orbital? In order to understand that we need to understand the term Mobius strip. In mathematics Mobius strip or band or loop which is also spelled Mobius or Mobius is a surface with only one side and only one boundary curve. The Mobius strip is the simplest non-orientable surface. It can be realized as a ruled surface. Its discovery is attributed independently to the German scientist Mobius. So there is a very uh, huge difference between the uh, system uh, like you can see here. So there is a huge difference in the topology of uh, orbitals. You can see in Huckel, in the case of Huckel, you can see the orbitals are arranged in a phased manner which is 4n plus 2. Here as far as Huckel concept is concerned, 4n plus 2 is aromatic, 4n is anti-aromatic. Whereas in the case of Mobius topology, you can see how the orbitals are twisted. Now as far as Mobius topology is concerned, 4n systems are aromatic and 4n plus 2 systems are 
anti aromatic there is also another representation you can see so as far as huckel is concerned you have a, a planar arrangement of orbitals whereas in the case of mobius system okay it is only a single sided system and you, you also have a twisted huckel form which is having a double sided system the best example for a mobius system is the trans c9 h9 plus okay uh cyclononenyl cation okay now let us try to understand still further what happens here in a mobius system again the pattern of orbital energy in mobius system is given by a rotated frost cycle with the edge of the polygon on the bottom instead of vertex let us move into that into detail okay now in the case of huckel system when we try to draw the frost cycle to determine the energy level the polygon corresponding to the cyclic annulin is inscribed in the circle of radius 2 beta and centered at alpha and the y coordinate of the vertices of the polygon are the simple huckel theory orbital energies and for us as far as the huckel topology is concerned the vertex so this is your vertex the vertex is positioned at the bottom of the circle inside the uh, the polygon uh, the vertex of the polygon is inscribed okay in such a way that uh, uh, the uh, vertex is positioned at the circle bottom as suggested by frost but for systems with mobius topology okay a polygon is positioned at the circle bottom in other words for an n carbon system the mobius frost cycle is rotated by pi n so if you just rotate it pi n times compared to the huckel system and you can see it is the bottom that touches the circle it is not the vertex okay so it is seen that with one molecular orbital at the bottom so you have one molecular orbital at the bottom and then group of degenerate pairs therefore the huckel system can accommodate 4n plus 2 electron following the huckel rule now please remember please understand that why we are using that formula 4n plus 2 so that plus 2 corresponds to the electron that is put up in the vertex in the frost cycle and the electrons that is present in the uh, bonding molecular orbital so this plus 2 is always added up in the frost cycle whereas this plus 2 is not available in mobius it starts with 4n okay however in contrast the mobius system will have degenerate pairs of molecular orbital starting at the circle bottom so it is the degenerate pair of orbitals that start at the uh, mobius system whereas it is only one molecular orbital that starts at the uh, vertical uh, at the bottom so that is the reason why here we use 4n plus 2 that plus 2 corresponds to this pair of electron and here we use 4n and thus will accommodate 4n electron so for cyclic annulenes one then predicts which species is favored okay so this is with regard to the frost diagram that one has to remember and draw in the case of uh, uh, huckel and mobius system now coming back to our discussion here so we need to understand that in the case of mobius system 4n electronic systems are aromatic while 4n plus 2 electronic systems are anti aromatic so please remember in mobius system 4n electrons are aromatic and 4n plus 2 electronic systems are anti aromatic again i am representing the huckel orbital so you can see the huckel orbital all the lobes are on the same plane whereas in a mobius system you can see uh, the mobius strip is formed and the molecule is uh, uh, symmetrically arranged in such a manner that the orbitals are not on the single plane rather the orbitals are in the different plane okay 
So once this the same example uh, that is C9H9 plus ion which we have seen already. Okay. Now coming back here, this study about Mobius is used extensively in pericyclic reaction. They were Zimmerman framework for, uh, for pericyclic reaction was very much supported by Huckel and Mobius molecular system. So the Mobius Huckel treatment is one of the two predicting reactions allowedness versus forbiddenness. The concept is the counterpart of the Woodward Hoffman approach which we normally utilize in order to predict the products in pericyclic reaction. So when we study pericyclic reaction, we will understand how this uh, Mobius Huckel treatment is done along with your Woodward and Hoffman approach. So, but the first isolable compound was not synthesized until 2003 by the group of Rainer Hurges. However, the fleeting trans C9 H9 plus cation 1 conformation of which shown on the right was proposed to be a Mobius aromatic reactive intermediate in 1998 based on a computational experimental evidence. Let us go into the details of Huckel Mobius aromaticity. Now, the Erges compound 6, this is the Erges compound 6 was synthesized by, you, by several photochemical cycloaddition reaction from tetrahydrodianthracene and ladernane okay syn tricyclooctadiene 2 as a substitute for cyclooctatetraene now when this reaction is performed it is a simple cycloaddition reaction an intermediate 5 was the mixture of two isomers and the final product 6 a mixture of five isomers with different cis and trans configuration was obtained. Now, one of them was found to have a C2 molecular symmetry corresponding to Mobius aromatic and the other Huckel isomer was found to be CS symmetry. Now, despite having 16 electrons in the spy system, making it an foreign anti-aromatic compound, the Hill-Bronner prediction was borne out because according to Herges and Morbius compound was found to be found to have aromatic properties with bond lens deduction from X-ray uh, crystallography and HOMA values obtained was about 0.5. Okay, uh, let us move into the details of the structure. Now, uh, in the conversion of intermediate 5 to 6 can proceed either by a Huckel or a Mobius transition state. Now, now let us take a pericyclic ring opening reaction to cyclododecahexaene. Now, this is a pericyclic ring opening reaction you can see. Now, in these two reactions, one involves 4n plus 2 electron and the other involves 4n electron. The occult transition state on the left hand side involves 6 electrons. You can see 6 electrons are operating that leads to the formation of this cyclododecahexadene and uh, with a CS molecular symmetry. You will understand the symmetry considerations when you study the pericyclic reactions but for time being let us try to understand that this molecular uh, ring opening happens with CS molecular symmetry conserved throughout the reaction and the rotation the ring opening is disrotatory and suprafacial and both bond length alternation and NICS values indicate that the six membered ring is aromatic okay now before going into the details of this area let us try to understand what is this NICS value okay now, when we talk about uh, uh, aromatic systems, one of the best way to identify the presence of aromaticity in molecule is to determine the aromatic ring current that is observed in aromatic molecules. How to determine the aromatic ring current? If a magnetic field is directed perpendicular to the plane of the aromatic system, okay. 
so if you have uh, an aromatic system and if you direct a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the aromatic system a ring current is induced in the delocalized pi electrons of the aromatic ring this is a direct consequence of ampere's law since the electrons are involved in a free uh, movement they circulate rather than being localized they respond more strongly to the magnetic field according to ampere's rule any moving electric field will generate a magnetic field perpendicular to its direction of motion now this ring current creates its own magnetic field outside the ring the field is in the same direction see the 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 magnetic field moves in this direction so outside the field outside the ring it moves in this direction that is the same direction of the applied magnetic field whereas inside the ring when the magnetic field moves inside it is actually uh, the magnetic field is actually opposing okay so when uh, when this magnetic field moves inside it is actually opposing the external magnetic field and the magnetic field that moves outside it is actually get aligned with the external magnetic field okay so inside the ring the uh, field counteracts the externally applied magnetic field and as a result the net magnetic field outside the ring is greater than the externally applied field alone and it is less inside the ring so this aromatic ring currents are relevant to nmr spectroscopy as they dramatically influence this ma induced magnetic field is what we uh, call it as uh, the magnetic susceptibility so uh, they dramatically influence the chemical shift especially uh, in proton nuclei and this effect helps us to distinguish these nuclear environments and it is therefore greater use in molecular structure determination for example in the case of benzene we will be doing this in detail when we do our nmr uh, spectroscopy so in benzene the ring protons experiences a de shielding because of the induced magnetic field uh, has the same direction outside the ring as the external field and the chemical shift will be around 7.3 ppm compared to that of 5.6 for the phenylic proton in cyclo hexene in contrast any protons that is present inside the ring experiences a shielding because both fields are in the opposite direction and this is and uh, this can be observed in cyclo octa uh, decanonine that is 18 anulin with six inner protons having a chemical shift value of minus 3 ppm so the situation is reversed in anti aromatic compounds in the dianion of 18 anulin the inner protons are strongly deshielded at 20 and 29.5 while the outer protons are significantly shielded so that is the difference between an aromatic system and an anti aromatic system where the shielding and deshielding occurs so hence when you have a diamagnetic ring current so a diamagnetic ring current is the magnetic ring current that is induced because of the presence of external magnetic field or it is also known as a diatropic ring current is associated with aromaticity whereas paratropic ring current signifies anti-aromaticity now what is nics we need to understand that uh, the aromaticity is uh, always quantified with respect to the observed ring current and one method is called diamagnetic susceptibility exaltation lambda now what is this diamagnetic susceptibility it is the amount of magnetism or magnetic effect or induced magnetic field a molecule generates in the presence of an external magnetic system so the difference between the measured magnetic susceptibility of a compound and calculated value gives you diamagnetic susceptibility exaltation larger negative value of this diamagnetic susceptibility uh, be, uh, proves that the molecule is aromatic it has a negative value in order to accommodate with chemical shift the values close to zero are non aromatic and uh, the values which has a positive sign are anti aromatic okay so the nucleus independent chemical shift nics is a computational method that calculates the absolute magnetic shielding at the center of the ring 
the values are reported with a reversed sign to make them compatible with the chemical shift conventions of NMR spectroscopy. Then for a molecule with a uh, negative value of NICS, you can see they are aromatic. So whenever you observe a molecule with a negative value of nucleus independent chemical shift, then you can call it as aromatic. Whereas those which are non-aromatic and anti-aromatic, here you can see cyclobutadiene, which has a NIC is value of 27.6. Therefore, it is anti-aromatic. So in this method, negative NICS value indicates aromaticity and positive NICS values indicate anti aromaticity so let us come back to our reaction where we have been discussing about uh, the uh, pericyclic reaction and you can see here now in this case uh, the the occult transition state on the left involves six electron with a cs molecular symmetry conserved throughout the reaction the ring opening is as i told you it is disrotatory and uh, Suprafacial and the bond length alternation and NICA values indicate that the six membered ring is aromatic. Or, in other words, this ring opening passes through an aromatic transition state. On the other hand, on the right hand side, you see the Mobius transition state that involves eight electron because it is a four end system. So, when n is two, it becomes uh, four into two, eight. So, the Mobius transition state with eight electrons on the other hand has lower computed activation energy you can see the activation energy is much much lesser when compared to the Huckel system and it is characterized by a c2 symmetry a con rotatory and an antara facial ring opening and eight membered ring aromaticity okay so another interesting system is our cyclonona tetraenyl cation which i showed you in the top so this is our cyclonona tetraenyl cation which was explored for over 30 years by Paul V. Clear. Now this reactive intermediate is implied in the solvolysis of bicyclic chloride 9-deuteronine-chlorobicyclo 6.1.0 nonatriene to an indene okay, by dihydroindenol. The starting chloride is deuterated in only one position, but in the final product, it was observed that deuterium is distributed in almost all available position. This observation is explained by invoking a twisted eight electron geometry of cyclo. So this is a computed structure of trans C9H9 illustrating a twisted nature of the ring. Now, when you see a twisted ring, you can obviously come to a conclusion that this, uh, the p orbitals here have a Mobius strip structure. So, the orientation of the p orbitals around the ring changes. Tracing the p orbitals all the way around the ring results in a phase inversion relating to the starting uh, uh, p plane. So, the plane of the carbon soliton forms a Mobius strip okay so this is how we understand that these mobius transition states and mobius systems are so important in our present study so in the contrast of uh, to the rarity of mobius aromatic ground state molecular system so we uh, this is very much applicable in pericyclic transition state that uh, exhibit mobius aromaticity so the classification of a pericyclic transition state as either Mobius or Uckel topology determines whether it is 4n or 4n plus 2 electrons uh, and are required to make the transition state aromatic or anti-aromatic and therefore allowed or forbidden. So we need to understand in a very simple manner there are certain 4n systems that can exhibit aromatic character following Mobius strip concept. Okay, and Based on the energy level diagram derived for, for the Uckel molecular orbital theory which involves 4n plus 2 electron and 4n electron system for Mobius transition state are allowed whereas 4n plus 2 electron Mobius and 4n electron Uckel transition states are anti-aromatic and forbidden. So this is the basis for the Mobius Uckel concept which is very much used in pericyclic reaction. So we need to understand very clear in Mobius system 4n systems are aromatic, 4n plus 2 systems are anti-aromatic. In Huckel system, 4n plus 2 systems are aromatic and 4n systems are anti-aromatic. Okay. 
so let us try to understand so uh, we have already seen this so this involve this is this goes with uh, huckel transition state and this goes with a uh, cyclic uh, that is mobius transition state and we have already seen these structures okay yes so you can see here in the case of eight electron system as far as huckel is concerned you can see it is 4n plus 2 system so we start with 2 here we start with 2 electron here so we start with 2 electron here so this is our 2 electron and we have degenerate orbitals so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and we place the remaining 2 electrons here so this makes the entire system as uh, completely destabilized but when we try to apply the same 4 and 8 electron system in, in, with respect to Mobius we know that we have to first draw the degenerate orbitals in the Mobius system and we will be drawing uh, we will be putting all the electrons in the degenerate orbitals and all the 8 electrons are present in the bonding molecular orbital and the system is aromatic and the first synthetic Mobius aromatic compound was discovered uh, in the year 2003 and uh, this is uh, okay. So this is your molecule okay, and you can see how this molecule is twisted and uh, uh, it forms a complete aromatic system okay, and you can see how it has been twisted uh, uh, in order to accommodate the p orbitals giving rise to Mobius system. So as a thumb rule we need to understand that if you have a Mobius system okay, so if you have a Mobius system in a Mobius system we need to check whether the Mobius system has 4n electrons. So if it has a 4n electron, so all Mobius system with 4n electrons are aromatic and 4n plus 2 are anti-aromatic. Okay. So I will uh, I uh, see what I am right now doing is I am uh, writing it in a Jamboard. So I am going to share the link for this Jamboard, Jamboard and I want you to add uh, a lot of things uh, with respect to Mobius and that will be the part of the assignment. Now in this Jamboard you can always add a sticky note, you can type your answers you can uh, uh, you can always add, uh, add some sticky notes like this so you can type your answers here you can insert pictures okay you can if you want you can insert a picture and you you're going to make it so lively so this is what we call it as a jam board you can see here so i'm going to share the link i'll be sharing this link in our edunix platform so you can use this jam board there are uh, a lot of boards remaining so you can add you can add your comments you can share you can uh, put your pictures and whatever you understood after watching this video you you can share i will also share the wikipedia links so you can go through the wikipedia links in detail and then you can come out with uh, your answers so here you can see this mobius and huckel concept is mainly used in predicting the pathway of uh, 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 pericyclic reaction so as far as huckel is concerned 4n plus 2 is aromatic it is allowed for Mobius it is forbidden because it is anti-aromatic on the other hand if the system is 4n then Huckel is forbidden it is anti-aromatic whereas Mobius it is allowed it is aromatic so uh, that, that is how we try to understand the uh, Huckel and uh, Mobius system okay so the co the concept of pericyclic reaction is right now out of scope of our discussion we will do it this in detail when we try to understand our uh, pericyclic reaction okay so all the very best please go through this video carefully and uh, don't forget to add your comments and answers to your jamboard and this is your part of the assignment for this week thank you and god bless